Voles are mouse-like animals. Voles have plump bodies about 5 inches or 13 centimetres long. They have short tails, short legs and tiny ears. Most voles have brown or grey fur. Vole reads V, v, v. v reads V, V, V. was a good little mouse, but he was very messy. Victor Vole, his mother would say to him, clean your whiskers. Victor Vole, she would say to him, brush your fur. Victor Vole, she would say to him, wipe the crumbs from your mouth. Don't be so messy, Victor Vole. Victor Vole would clean his whiskers, brush his fur, or wipe the crumbs from his mouth. Then he would forget all about being neat until the next time his mother reminded him. Victor Vole, she would say, I love you very, very much. Will you remember to keep clean and neat? Victor Vole wanted to do what his mother said, but being neat just didn't seem very important to Victor Vole. Victor Vole just went on his messy way from day to day. One day the news came that Uncle Velma Vole was ha coming to visit in a month. Uncle Velma Vole was reported to be quite rich, although no one really knew if that were true. I'm not sure what a rich vole would have. Perhaps he had a lot of grain or nuts stored away. Anyway, that was the story about Uncle Velma Vole. The vole family decided they had better get ready for the visit from Uncle Velma Vole. Children, Uncle Velma Vole is my favorite brother. Will you please mind your manners and show Uncle Velma that I have taught you well, asked Papa Vole. All the little voles agreed they would try. They decided that they would help each other if I see you being messy, I will tell you. If you see me being messy, you can tell me, they agreed. With vim, vigour and vitality, they did correct each other. You're being a very messy vole, one would whisper to the other. Thank you, I'll try to do better, the other would say. Poor Victor Vole, he had a very hard time being neat. Almost every time someone said, very messy vole, they were talking to Victor Vole. Everyone wondered if Victor Vole was going to be able to become a neat vole in time for Uncle Velma's visit. One day Mrs Vole said, Victor Vole, you are still a very messy vole and it is almost time for Uncle Velma to arrive. I have decided I will have to give you some special help. Victor Vole smiled. All right, Mama, whatever you say. You need to understand that it is important to be neat. We will find a way to help you understand how important it is. The next morning at breakfast table, there were two packages by Victor Vole's plate. What is this? It's not my birthday. Why do I get presents and no one else? You will see when you open them, said Mrs Vole. Victor Vole opened the first package. It was wrapped in pretty paper and it had a pretty ribbon, but there was a strange smell about it. In fact, Victor Vole thought it was very bad smell but it would not have been polite to say so. From the box, Victor Vole took an old shirt that was about the ugliest shirt he had ever seen in his life. It was not only ugly, but it was dirty. There were stains and crumbs and dirt marks all over it, and it smelled as if it had never been washed. Phew! I don't understand, Mama. Why did you give me this awful dirty shirt? Mama Vole smiled a very little smile, smile and said, now open the other box and I will tell you. Victor Vole opened the other package and when he folded back the paper, he almost had to blink his eyes because the sight was so beautiful. There was the most gorgeous and beautiful vest Victor Vole had ever seen. It was so clean and neat, made of soft velvet. The vest was vivid violet colour. It felt like a fluffy cloud brought down to earth. Oh, it was lovely. Victor Vole started to put it on, but his mother said, No, no, Victor Vole, not just yet. Wait until you hear about the vest and the shirt. They are to show you about how important it is to be neat. When you are messy, you will have to wear the smelly, ugly shirt. 
When you're careful and neat, you may wear the velvet vest for five minutes. But, Victor Vol held his breath, what was going to happen? If you cannot be neat most of the time, you'll have to wear the ugly shirt while Uncle Velma Vol is here. Oh, Mama, please, that would be awful. I agree, said Mama Vol. Your father and I would be most embarrassed. But Victor Vol, you must learn to be careful and neat. In the week that followed, there were several times when Victor Vol had to wear the smelly, awful looking shirt. The next week, however, there were very few times. And the next week, there was only one time. Everyone was so proud of Victor Vol, and Victor Vol was happier himself. Of course, Victor Vol had to remember to clean his whiskers, brush his fur, and clean off the crumbs, but more and more Victor Vol remembered. Victor Vol really became quite a neat little Vol. On the morning Uncle Velma Vol was to arrive, all the little Vols were so excited, waiting and getting ready. Everyone looked so nice. Victor Vol, wearing the vivid velvet vest of such a lovely violet colour, was the most handsome Vol of all. Victor Vol, his mother said, I am truly proud of you. Not just because you look nice today, but because you have learned to be a neat little Vol. Yes, Victor Vol, said all the little Vols, we are proud of you. You are a credit to the family. Victor Vol looked down proudly at the beautiful velvet vest and felt happy. Oh, Victor Vol might forget sometimes, but Victor Vol was going to be the neatest Vol in the whole family. Even though Victor Vol was a good Vol, he had a problem. What was it? Yes, he was very messy, wasn't he? Did Mother love Victor Vol anyway? Of course she did. Who was coming to visit? Uncle Velma Vol was coming. What did the little Vols agree to do so they could learn manners? They agreed to remind each other to be neat. But who still couldn't remember to be neat? That's right, Victor Vol. Mrs Vol gave Victor Vol two packages. What was in the first one? Yes, it was a smelly, dirty old t-shirt, wasn't it? What about the second one? It was a beautiful velvet violet vest. Did Victor Vol try even harder to be neat? Mm, he did, didn't he? What did Victor Vol get to wear when Uncle Velma came? That's right, his velvet violet vest. What had Victor Vol learned? Yes, he'd learned how to be neat. Is it important to be neat? Yes, yes it is. Whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with might. Ecclesiastes 9 verse 10a Long ago in Bible times, there was a woman named Hannah and her husband Elkanah. Hannah wanted a baby very badly and she cried and prayed to God. She said, God, if you will give me a baby boy, I will give him to you to serve you all of his life. God answered Hannah's prayer and gave him a baby boy. She named him Samuel. While Samuel was still a tiny child, Hannah took him to the house of the Lord. She said to the aged priest, Eli, For this child I prayed, and the Lord has given me what I asked. Therefore I have given this child to God as long as he lives. Samuel worshipped the Lord. His mother went home and left him there at the temple with the aged priest, Eli. I am sure that little Samuel, who loved the Lord, was a great comfort to Eli. Little Samuel wore the same kind of clothes that the priest wore, and each year his mother made him a little robe and brought it to him. Samuel did, a little, did little jobs for Eli and helped with the work of the ministry in the temple. When little Samuel went to bed at night, his mother was not there to kiss him goodnight. Do you think he missed her? He may have been lonely at times, but I'm sure that the Lord comforted him. The Bible teaches that Samuel grew on, on and was in favour both with the Lord and also with men. 
One night, Samuel heard a voice calling, Samuel. Samuel said quickly, Here I am. He decided that it was the priest Eli who had called him. And he went in where Eli was sleeping and he said, Here I am. You called me. Eli said, I didn't call you. Go back and lie down again. Samuel went back to bed again. He heard a voice saying, Samuel. Again, Samuel went to Eli and said, Here I am. You called me. One more time, Eli said, I called you not, my son. Lie down again. The Bible says that Samuel did not yet know the Lord and the word of the Lord had not been revealed unto him. God had chosen Samuel to be a priest and now God wanted to talk to Samuel. God called again, Samuel. Samuel still did not realize it was God, but this time Eli understood that it was God who was calling Samuel. Go back and lie down, Samuel. If you hear the voice again, say, Speak, Lord, for I'm your servant and I'm listening to you. Again the Lord came and stood and called, Samuel, Samuel. This time Samuel knew who it was and what to do. Speak, he said, for your servant hears you. Then the Lord told Samuel some strange things that were going to happen. God told him, him how he would deal with the wicked sons of Eli and what would happen to the country of Israel. Soon everyone in the whole country knew God had appeared to Samuel and though Samuel was young he was a prophet of God. The Lord did punish Eli's sons and the whole country suffered for their wickedness. The country was defeated in a war. Eli died. Twenty years passed and Samuel spoke to the Israelites. You need to return to God and stop worshipping idols. The people knew they were sinful and backslidden. They said, we want to return to God. Samuel said, everybody gather together and I will pray for you. Get ready to worship the Lord. Get right with him. Serve God, God only and he will deliver you out of the hand of your enemies. The people gathered and prayed and fasted. We have sinned against the Lord, they said. Their enemies, the Philistines, heard the Israelites were gathered together. The Philistines decided to come up and fight the Israelites while they were all in one place. All the Israelites were afraid and said to Samuel, Don't stop crying to the Lord our God to save us out of the hands of the Philistines. Then Samuel offered a sacrifice to God and cried to God and God heard him. As the Philistine armies came near to fight, God thundered a great thunder. The Philistines were so frightened, they left. God had saved his people. Samuel was for many years the prophet of Israel. He gave the people the words God told him. Samuel was the last judge of Israel. It all started when a tiny little boy who was left at the temple worshipped God and decided to serve him. 1 Samuel chapters 1 to 7. Character objective, thorough. To do the very best I can. You need to know what, if neglected, will reduce the effectiveness of your work. And then do all that should be done to complete it. God loves little children and he wants them to love him. Make up your mind right now that you will love and obey God. Even little children can serve God and pray to him. Whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with might. Ecclesiastes 9 verse 10a Whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with might. Ecclesiastes 9 verse 10a Whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with might. Ecclesiastes 9 verse 10a Say it with me. Whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with might. Ecclesiastes 9 verse 10a. Once more together. Whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with might. Ecclesiastes 9 verse 10a. Listen as I tell you a word. Can you hear the v sound? Stove. Can you hear the v sound in the word stove? Yes, stove has the v sound. Milk, can you hear the v 
sound in the word milk. No, milk doesn't have the v sound. Kick. Can you hear the v sound in the word kick? No, kick doesn't have the v sound. Vest. Can you hear the v sound in the word vest? Yes, vest has the v sound. Cave. Can you hear the v sound in the word cave? Yes, cave has the v sound. Very. Can you hear the v sound in the word very? Yes, very has the v sound. Oven. Can you hear the v sound in the word oven? Yes, oven has the v sound. Sun. Can you hear the v sound in the word sun? No, sun doesn't have the v sound. Off. Can you hear the v sound in the word off? No, off doesn't have the v sound. Glove. Can you hear the v sound in the word glove? Yes, glove has the v sound. Listen as I read a sentence. Can you find the word that has the v sound? A hot stove will burn. Can you find the word that has the v sound? A hot stove will burn. That's right. Stove has the v sound. The sky above the earth. Can you find the word that has the v sound? The sky is above the earth. That's right, above. We ride to school in a van. Can you find the word that has the v sound? We ride to school in a van. That's right, van has the v sound. God gave his only son. Can you find the word that has a v sound? God gave his only son. That's right, gave has a v sound. Beavers swim well. Can you find the word that has the v sound? Beavers swim well. That's right, beavers has the v sound. Let's blend these sounds. V, A, V, A, V. V, A, V, A, V. V, A, V, A, V. V, E, V, E, V. V, E, V, E, V. V, I, V, I, V. V, E, V, E, V. V, O, V, O, V. V, A, V, A, V. V, U, V, U, V. Let's blend these sounds into words. S A V S A V Save Save G A V G A V Gave Gave K A V K A V Cave Cave P A V P A V Pave Pave R A V R A V Rave Rave O A V O A V Wave Wave S L A V S L A V Slave Slave B R A V B R A V Brave Brave K R A V K R A V Crave Crave G 
r a v g r a v grave grave v o l v o l vol vol v a s v a s vase vase v a n v a n vain vain V reads. V. 